Hello all. So before continuing with our design of neural network, let's first check for how our design is performing uh, till now. So we'll make a comparison between the uh, resource utilization and timing performance between uh, Zigmoid based implementation as well as the value based implementation. So I have just created a, a Vivado project. I have added all the files here. So you can see the MIF files. Vivado it automatically adds under memory initialization file. He detects it. So this is our Sigmoid initialization file, and this is the file where all the weight values are there for this particular neuron. At this point, the values really doesn't matter. But this particular neuron, uh, it is taking 784 inputs. So there will be 784 weights in this file, and this file has the bias value. You can directly open it from here uh, we can go to that folder and open and see okay so these are the weight values in binary again 16 bit wide and uh, this is the bias value again 16 bit okay so first let me uh, try for relu so you can see uh, once i set the activation type as relu he automatically Highlighting ReLU here, okay. So the sigmoid is somehow blurred here. Now to do a timing performance comparison, I'm also adding a constraint file and uh, I'm putting a constraint of 250 megahertz as the target clock frequency. So let's see how much he can achieve, okay. And this include file, again, this style is coming from our C. So if you have any constant declaration, uh, tick defines you can just add it to this include file so i'm just adding this pre-trained uh, parameter here so that this uh, training part that doesn't get implemented training part in a sense the part where we are writing to the weight memory and to the bias register the those parts uh, they are not getting implemented so i will do till uh, implementation and uh, let's see how much resources ReLU is taking and what is the timing performance. Okay, so implementation is completed. Let's see uh, the results. Okay, so in terms of resource utilization, you can see this is the resource utilization. Uh, utilization for lats and flip flops, you can see it's quite small. It is just uh, a 024 percentage of the chip capacity. Okay. That means 53,200 divided by 130. Uh, we can approximately implement 409 neurons. Okay, so lats will be one of the factors which will decide how many you can implement it because the number of flip flops is actually double that of that of lats. Uh, number of block rams. Okay, so this you can see like he automatically inferred a block ram. Uh, this is used for implementing our weight memory. It's written like half block RAM because uh, I guess I mentioned before Silinx one full block RAM is 36 kilobit, but it can be divided into two 18 kilobits. Okay, so he's using only one 18 kilobits block RAM, so that's why it is half and two DSP slices. Okay, so this is another factor which will limit the total uh, maximum number of uh, neurons that you can have. So as per this, you can have only 110 neurons. Uh, but since we didn't explicitly use DSPs, once all these 220 DSPs are exhausted, he will be using LUTs and flip-flops to implement uh, those multipliers. Okay, so yeah, we'll have to really see. So ultimately, we should be focusing on LUTs and flip-flops because once block RAMs and DSPs are exhausted, He'll use LATS and flip flops to either make distributed RAM or to implement multipliers using LATS and flip flop. Uh, that's about timing. Uh, that's about resource utilization. So let's save these results so that we can make some comparison later. So this is for our ReLU. And uh, timing performance, you can see uh, here it's written versus negative slack is a minus number. Okay, So slack basically means what you requested 
and what is achievable so slack is negative means he cannot achieve uh, whatever constraint we put we put uh, 250 megahertz that is 4 nanoseconds he's saying like there's a slack of this much that means the maximum he can achieve is what are you requested plus 752 this one by this that is 210 megahertz that is the f max maximum frequency as of now okay if you have any uh, other critical path when we finish the design it may come down okay so that's about our relu one now let's try with the sigmoid one so this one i will just change to uh, sigmoid and sigmoid depth is 10 that means this file sig content should contain 1024 if it doesn't contain 1024 uh, he may optimize things a bit okay so we should make sure it has all 1024 okay so that's sitting here and this has 1024 okay so all looks fine so let's just go ahead and uh, run till implementation again so he'll see like he automatically detects now uh, it is sigmoid redo is under highlighter okay I'll see you after this okay so that's also completed let's see so in terms of resource utilization this is how it looks like uh, let's quickly compare it okay so you'll see the number of flats and flip-flops they have considerably less when we went for sigmoid implementation because in case of relu there is a logic uh, which implements the relu part this one this is totally implemented using lots and flip-flop that's why it is relatively high that is one reason second one okay so in the previous tutorial i made a mistake i made a claim that if you use computational circuit style uh, this memory will be implemented in distributed RAM but uh, Vivado is quite smart now I realized so the sigmoid memory that also got implemented using block RAM okay so that's why previously it is half block RAM now it became one block RAM so 18 kilobit that is used for a weight memory and another 18 kilobit it is used for uh, implementing this sigmoid memory the number of dsp slices remains same no change i use unbuff g now it doesn't make sense because uh, later neuron won't be a standalone design so this you don't have to worry about it so anyway this is taking little bit more block ram but it is using much lets and flip-flop so we cannot really say like one is better than the other at this point at least now if we look at the timing performance here slack is this much which is more than previous one i guess four plus point nine seven three uh one by that is 201 megahertz is f max here okay Okay, so in terms of frequency, uh, Fmax really has better performance compared to our uh, sigmoid, although the resource utilization is lesser. Okay, that means there is a larger combinational circuit here uh, compared to a combinational circuit here. So this makes it clear that only because resource utilization is more doesn't mean that the clock performance will be uh, worse. Okay, although we usually feel like these are uh, mutually opposite uh, when you have more resources especially more LUTs uh, the clock for performance will be worse but here you can see that is not the case it all depends upon the critical path the largest combination circuit that we have we'll do one more last uh, experiment because the sigmoid memory size the depth of that memory it plays an important role uh, regarding the resource utilization as well as clock performance so instead of using 10 that is 1024 let's reduce it to 5 
and let's see what happens so I need to modify this sigmem it really doesn't matter actually because he is supposed to take only 32 values from all these values but the problem is all first 32 values are zero so Vivado will definitely optimize away that entire memory so to prevent it uh, let me run now a script okay so now okay in the script also I need to change it okay yeah so he has modified it so let's run this uh, last case also and see what happens okay so that's also completed Okay. Now you'll see the number of flats and flip flops they have slightly increased, but the number of block ramps it has gone back to half. So again, it shows like Vivado he is quite smart. So he found the memory uh, for that basic point. It is quite small, so it doesn't make much sense to implement it using an 18 KB block ramp. So instead of that, this time he implemented using distributed RAM. Okay, so because of this, I think last time I had the wrong notion like he always implements it using distributed RAM. Anyway, so this time he used some distributed RAM and he implemented it here and block RAM remains there. So in this case, if you compare these two, you will see like definitely our Sigmoid implementation uh, resource utilization is much, much lesser than the radio based implementation okay uh, vrams and esps they are exactly same but lats and flip flops especially lats uh, it's almost half of whatever is used here uh, let's look at the clock performance also yeah so that is where the real effect is you will see like uh, negative slack has considerably increased because of that distributor tram thing so now it is 1.155 so it is 4 plus 1.155 by x it is only 194 megahertz is the current f max okay yeah so that's the impact of having distributed ram uh, compared to a block ram okay so, so we will keep this data because this is uh, one information that we need for comparison uh, another important one is the accuracy in terms of uh, properly detecting uh, whatever it is supposed to detect whether relu is better or sigmoid is better that we need to find out that we will only find out after finishing the entry design so we'll keep it for that thank you